loose but at this what's this the purse line oh, i don't know that it's also called pigweed yeah. pigweed oh yeah that was so it's well, a sister and i have these cute little flowers now and it have really little black seeds yeah so it's a little succulent it just grows grows along the ground it's like a little creeper it's like slightly salty no, it's not. It's quite nice, that one. It's not salty at all. Yeah. But yeah, nice for a bit of a salad. Um, a little citrusy. That's the way to describe it. Don't you reckon? If you say so. But uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, distinctive looking and it has these nice little yellow flowers. People keep these um, sometimes in pots or they get rid of them because, you know, it's seen as a weed. Yeah, but it's useful. Like a lot of weeds, actually, it's useful. Animals will eat it. So, we've got some escapees actually. Oh, what the hell? You can't come, you little shit. Daddy! Look at these little maggots. <laughs> Dogs have escaped and followed us here. Little shits. Daddy! Get up here! What are you, how did you get there? Come here! Daddy, get up here! You silly dog! <laughs> so this plant is called uh, Cat's Ear. Um, it's pretty similar to dandelion. They look quite a bit like dandelion. Uh, a couple of differences. One, at um, the flowers, the stalks often split. So you have multiple on one stem. So look, it sort of splits there and then you have two. Um, another thing is if you you break it off, the flower stem uh, isn't quite as hollow as the dandelion. Dandelions have a quite a hollow um, stem that you could easily blow air through. These ones not so much. So you can eat the flowers, you can eat the leaves, they're nice and salad. Try and get one without dirt. Just, I don't taste like any sort of um, veggie green I guess. Anyway, you can uh, pull them out of the ground, which can be a bit hard. And they have these uh, tuber roots, a bit like a carrot. And like with most uh, tubers, you're, you're better off boiling them. You can boil them up and uh, yeah, quite nice. So it's actually surprising how much, um, how big the tubers are, considering how little the plant is. These aren't mature plants either, so yeah, it's not a bad feed. So we're just here at the creek and I noticed here and here, these are uh, creek lily pilly berries, which means that somewhere up there there's going to be a lily pilly, so we'll get some fruit off that later. We're following the creek up, and uh, on our way, we Lou noticed this there's a little lily pilly just there, wedged between the rocks, which means we're on the right track. We need to keep our eye out for some fruit on the actual tree. And finally, here is the lily pilly. So this is actually a uh, creek lily pilly. And, let's see if I can reach that. Like, um, like all lily pillies, they look amazing. They look like they'll be the nicest tasting berry. Some of them even look better than this, but um, not an amazing taste really. So I have a sometimes small, sometimes large seed. Throw it in and see if the fish want it. Nope. Anyway, um, it's kind of like an astringent taste, a little bit sweet, kind of the texture of an apple. And it's almost like a tart bitterness, a little bit like a eucalyptus -y flavor, flavor, but not quite. So let's grab a bunch off the tree. Right, ch chuck them in the water. And they float. So a lot of uh, a lot of fruits and berries and things will actually float. And then they get carried downstream. So if you're in an area and you find some berries or some fruit next to a stream, it's most likely been um, carried down by the by the stream itself, and uh, it's likely that there's a uh, fruiting plant upstream. The trick is you don't know how far upstream it is. Hey, you see, there they go. It's recording, not taking photos, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> back. Back again. Mickey and Jaddy are back. Alright, Brian, you can Alright, he's a bushwalking camping with us, I guess. Her mum was supposed to feed them while we were away, but I guess they're coming with us. Go on, Mickey, if you're gonna camp with us, don't be pissed. <laughs> Look at her swimming. So Jaddy's across, but Mickey's a bit afraid of the water, but he's got to learn. He, I mean, he can swim, but he's still a bit nervous because there's a bit of a current, but this is fine. Come on, Mickey. Come on. Good boy. Yeah. You can walk. It's not that deep. Yeah, come oh. on. Oh Mickey. Come on. You're going to be a bush dog. Oh you got to, oh you got to be tough. Come I'm on. Dying, I'm not coming to get you. You've got to do it yourself. Don't at me. Stop squealing. <laughs> come here. Follow Jaddy, look. Daddy. Good, boy. Good boy, come on. Good. Good boy, I'll give you a Snoopy. Good. good boy. Is it cold? It's a bit cold for you. Come. Yeah, so if it's a survival situation, we leave or eat Mickey. Yeah. Good boy, have a drink. Have a drink. Calm down. Eel right beneath me. You know how I said that is, um, beach, um, the sand circle to you? Yeah. I've got the pimples in the spot of it. Oh, yeah. There's an eel right here. Really? <laughs> yeah, I filmed it. A little bit bigger than the other one we saw. Alright, we're going to try and get this silly sausage on, across so he can learn that it's come okay. On, come on, you're so, you're so close. Come on. Come on! Mickey. Come here. You're just going to have to drag him. Come here. Put him in the water though. Now you're in. Yeah! <laughs> Good, boy. Good boy! Help me! On, you're fine, mate. Come on. Good boy, <laughs> me. Brilliant. Wow, so happy. The funny thing is, Mickey, we're actually going to that side of the creek in a minute. We just wanted you to shut up. Nice. Steam metal. So you can, very recognizable leaves and they've got all these little hairs that sting you on them. But uh, you can boil it up and eat that as well. Can she make it? Yes, she can. There we go. Oh. <laughs> so this growing here on the bank and in the stream itself is uh, Lamandra longifolia, spiny-headed matrash. Uh, I talked about it in the coastal edibles video. And what you do is you pluck out some of the central um, leaves and you can eat the first white bit that's soft. But um, since this is growing around the water, I'm not going to eat this without cooking it. But tastes like peas. Mm. Yeah, don't don't eat it without cooking, just because it's growing in the water. So if you eat the ones, for example, up here on the bank, you have all the sand and stuff which um, will filter the water. So this is growing straight in the water, so it's sucking it up. So it's more likely to have um, you know bacteria or things like that in it. But I think it should be safe either way, really, but I'd rather cook it if it's growing actually in the stream. Consistency of leek. Yeah. Consistency of leek and it tastes like peas. Yeah. There's a little sandpaper fig. It has edible fruits, it's not fruiting at the moment, but uh, the leaves are like sandpaper. You can, in here, it's kind of abrasive. And you, yeah, you can use this to sand off tools, and it's um, yeah, just a very distinctive, slightly serrated leaves. Yeah, the fruit's quite nice as well. And here we have uh, more sandpaper fig, and this actually has fruit on it, but they're not quite ready. Generally, if a plant has milky sap, you shouldn't eat it, but in this case, it's a fig, so they had milky sap. If you can see that, I'll grab another one. There you go. See, it's like a milky, milky almost latex-looking kind of sap. But yeah, there are exceptions. For example, mangoes and um, what, cashews have milky sap and you can eat them. So, But in general, if you don't know what something is and it has milky sap, that's a no-no. See, there's a lot of fruit on it. I'm going to come back later when these are a bit bigger and more ripe. You love the water, don't you? You're a water dog. I'm going to film your cat-like grace and elegance. 
That agility. Yeah, the dog. This is a paper bag. It's very distinctive because the bark is like paper. And uh, also called the proper name is Melaleuca. Um, you can take off the bark, big chunk of it, and uh, wrap up meat, and you can cook it in the coals, and it acts like a um, tin foil. Also, certain trees will actually collect water in the trunk, so if it has like a uh, distinctive bulge, you can uh, piss the bulge and uh, water will come out. Not this one, it's still a pretty young one, but yeah, I'll see if I can find one that might have water in it. But yeah, very useful tree, um, good for fire lighting. We'll see, see how this works. Let's buff it up a bit, like so. Let's see if it takes a spark. Oh, just saw some flame. There we go. Quite well. You need to buff it up well. Yeah, but mm -hmm. that takes for like ten seconds. Yeah, it takes a spark nicely. And uh, there's your fire. Obviously, I don't want to start a full fire at the moment, so I'll just stomp it out. But yeah, that works well. This <laughs> the wind has bent this over. So this is a sort of wattle. It's an, an acacia. Um, I'm not sure what sort. Maybe. A case here along the folia. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to get back to you on that. But I'm pretty sure I've used this same uh, sort of water before as soap. So I'll grab some leaves and see if it works. Should be enough for now. I'll give it a try. Crush it up a little in your hand. And then <clears throat> dip it in the water a bit. Anyway, see if I can film this. I don't know if you can see that, but it uh, must be the one that's made with soap. We can see all those uh, soap sacks. Very soapy, almost like a detergent. So, you can see all those bubbles. And that's good, those bubbles help uh, get all the dirt and bacteria out of your uh, out of your pores and like the creases of your skin. Um, the other thing is, the reason why it's doing that is because it contains saponin, which basically is like soap. And the cool thing about that is, it also uh, works as a fish poison. So if you get a bunch of this stuff and scrunch it all up through the water, it has to be, um, you know, a still finite amount of water, like a dam or a billabong. Uh, you can actually use it as fish poison, and basically it uh, saps all the oxygen out of the water, and the fish come up to the surface because they can't breathe, and then you can just catch them by hand. I think Jad is over there having a little swim with the otter shears. Now this, growing on the tree, is Usnia. And it's antibacterial, antifungal, and you can use it to uh, stop bleeding and uh, disinfect wounds. So you sort of wrap it around it with a bit of string, if you have a cut on your hand, say. Wrap it around your finger, and then tie it off, and then that's your bush band-aid. Uh, people also make uh, teas and things out of it for bronchitis and things like that, but I've only ever tried using it topically, and yeah, it works well. I can't, don't know if I'd want to eat it, but yeah, it works well as a band-aid. It's fairly spongy, so it soaks up the blood. This is a bush lemon. You can see by the citrusy leaves, are kind of waxy, pretty distinctive green. And if you're unsure, you just take one off, crush it, and it'll smell like lemon. Pretty simple. Um, they're, they're actually introduced, a lot of people think they're natives, but they're introduced um, basically an old type of lemon, so they're quite thorny, and the fruits are sort of more of an orangey colour than uh, the usual yellow of a lemon. Uh, they have thorns, and they're sort of like an ugly, bumpy looking lemon, a bit more round, more, more of an orange shape, and um, they're quite nice, although they have a lot less juice than a regular lemon, but there's a few trees around here, and when they are growing the fruit, you collect a bunch and you can make really nice lemonade with it. How's the water here, Jaddy? Is it good? Every deep swimmable spot we come to, Jaddy has to go mm -hmm. in and test it and have a swim. And he's not going to test Good boy. Just to see and show that we're not abusing him. And now a real dog, Mickey.